ho, 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 and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay, Jimmy Stewart. I was trying to... Merry! Uh, if... <laughs> Merry! <laughs> in, um... In Christmas Vacation, when... No, it was not it. Um, In Christmas Vacation, when Chevy Chase opens the door and it's technically the the Jelly of the Month Club, but, like, the post office guy doesn't know. And then Mm -hmm. Chevy Chase, like, shuts the door when he's saying, Merry Christmas. He, like, slams it before he can say, like, the full Merry Christmas. That hurt. And I still think about it. So that's what I was trying to do. And I failed, obviously. But that's just it's December. Yeah, well, yeah, that movie lives in my mind. <laughs> I've only seen it a couple of times. Oh my god, we watch it. That's our most watched Christmas movie every year. And wow, n- yeah, yeah. I mean, we have our like stand. I mean, I think I just wasn't allowed to watch it for many years, mm-hmm. and my mom doesn't love it. And so I think yeah. it's it, it and like Scrooged. Or ones that oh, I, I watched I rarely later. watch. I rarely oh, watch I love Scrooge. Scrooge. I think I, I feel like my dad. I feel like that's one that he would it's, like it's if a, he's like lighting the tree. He could like pick that. It's one. It's a dad movie. Like, yeah, yeah. It's um, good. I like it. Um, but it's neither of those are our most watched. I think where there were always kids. Can't yeah, really you're a kids you're a Christmas story family, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. But we watched that one on like Christmas day christmas eve mm. that's like we just put on that well i mean we always watch it but yeah. then there's also whatever the channel is that plays the 24-hour loop of it yeah and then you just put that on in the background Got we it, could yeah. recite that movie from memory that's so that's we how really we are that's how we are with um christmas vacation have you seen the the new second one with the actual actor for a christmas story no oh it just it just came out peter billingsley he's the dad um and then he's like a writer and he's trying to like get um like the perfect christmas cuz his father just died in the movie. It was actually really good cuz there's a um, huh. there's another christmas story one with um Marv from Home Alone. He's the father in it. And like in a vacuum, that's not a bad movie, but like when you attach it to a christmas story, they're just I mean, they like didn't even tone the kid's hair because he's like a brunette, but they made him blonde. (laughs) And so it's like the brassiest boy ever. Um, So that one's like fine. But this new Christmas story was actually like really good. I my entire we were like, whoa, because I'm not like Christmas story is like one that I like. um, And we probably watch it like twice per Christmas season. Um, But it's not like my favorite one. But I actually thought I didn't have really high hopes for the for the new one, but it actually was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Hmm. So put it on your Interesting. movie TBW. We shall see. <laughs> we've worked through. We've gotten through the Home Alone's Elf, the Muppets Christmas Carol. Obviously, we watched Elf. Um, my nephew today was watching Elmo Christmas Carol or something with Oscar the Grouch. He was he was Scrooge. All right. Yeah. And it had like a very charming scene with Bert and Ernie. <laughs> Speaking of Scrooge, there is well, first of all, I would like to say for the record, Muppets Christmas Carol is the best Christmas Carol. I always have to say that because it's a fight in my house every year because my dad says it's the third best Christmas Carol, and literally everyone else is like, "What's wrong with you?" I don't think I could the- name another one. <laughs> There's like Michael Scott. Well, Michael C. Stott and. Patrick Stewart is in one. Oh. They're like fancy people. They're like period oh. drama Christmas carols. And I'm like, I don't yeah. want, I don't, I don't want to be, they're like kind of scary because the Christmas carol yeah. is kind of scary. Yeah. And they freak me out. And I'm like, why would I do that when instead I could have Gonzo as Charles Dickens tell me the story? <laughs> well, why would I be depressed <laughs> when I could watch Merm- uh, Mer- <laughs> Kermit the Frog? <laughs> Scat with his son. <laughs> like, come on. That's all I need in the holiday season. <laughs> that, that's my, that's anyway. All, that's uh, all I needed. <laughs> end the episode there. That's not what I was, I just wanted to say that for the record. What The point I was mm-hmm. actually trying to make was that apparently there's a new animated Christmas Carol, like, called Scrooge or something on what? Netflix. I have not watched Another it, but it showed one. up on my TikTok for you page. Um, because the music, it's a musical. 
cool. It's animated. Yeah. I, I've heard a couple of bits. It's like Luke Evans what? is Scrooge. He played what? Gaston in the live action. Yeah, movie he's hot, but if he's animated, yeah, he he's is. not going to be hot. But he also, well, Scrooge is low-key kind of fine. Okay, I take it back. So <laughs> just note that, especially, I mean, young Scrooge, but also kind of old Scrooge. <laughs> and there's a, they have obviously a song for when she, in the past, his like fiance or whatever yeah. is leaving him. And it's always super sad. Um, the song goes so hard. They're like <laughs> belting in harmony. It was I was like, what am I what why is this gonna make me cry? What is What's, why is the song going so hard? He was singing tra- like he had to pay the bills. <laughs> what's a tragic love story if they're not belting in harmony? I mean apart, I get well, but it's it it's old past. Scrooge singing like to his past self. But obviously his past self can't hear him. And he's like, don't let her walk away. And she is in the past saying to him that she's about to leave. Um, And they're harmonizing. And you're like, whoa, this is depressing. But also Scrooge can kind of get it. (laughs) I've got to admit, musicals are kind of my nightmare most of the time. Coupled probably with the Christmas Carol because it's just not my jam. Um, So when we turned on the Ryan Reynolds one with Spirited or whatever it's called. And collectively, we like heard the music start we were like god fucking damn it i was like what is going on why do we need music i don't even know what you're talking about he ryan Ryan, yeah and who else was in it um will ferrell i think we're will ferrell just wanted to fucking sing again so um they made like a what it's like will ferrell is um were they in hell? Was he? No. It's like something. And then Ryan Reynolds is a is like the bad, vain, money hungry guy. And then there are like spirits and they're trying to change him, I think, like to make him better. I don't know. Obviously, it's kind of along the Christmas Carol lines. But then they just started singing and it lost the plot. And it was it, I fell asleep. I truly did. And then I woke up and it was still going. And I was like, My, good God. And then I fell back to sleep. <laughs> so. That one happened. Um, Interesting. But, yeah. I just want to. I, I just. I just want to. I just want to play you this really quickly. There, you can cut all that, but like, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. I think there are two types of people in this world: one who really enjoys that, <laughs> and one who really doesn't. <laughs> You didn't enjoy them singing as he tells him <laughs> his past self not to let her say goodbye? Um, <laughs> it just, it, it, the uh, musicals, no. But look at him. Oh, he is a little cute. Why is he kind of fine? <laughs> what does young him look like? Um, That's I'm the trying real to see question. if I can find trying to be a gold digger you can like kind of see him in that picture but it's oh yeah he's got a he's got a chin he's got a jaw he's got some floppy hair he's a brunette yeah i tap that well i mean it really his hair is pointy which is interesting it's like don't we don't we love the point he's animated (laughs) he's animated really i just want to be like dressed like she is really i just want us to bring back like old-timey clothes Please. Not so much the undergarments, but I would look killer in a Victorian like silhouette. Yeah, I just I I love the like Georgian women's fashion. I hate Georgian men's fashion, like that shit. Like no, but the dresses on like Georgian romances are always so pretty, and like the big long sleeves and all that. Um, that's probably me. That's probably my favorite. Um. And then I th- I'd say Regency is, like, my least favorite because, like, what is that waistline? It's just not. It's not for me. Yeah, but they're really comfortable. That is true. That is true. Because it's, like, really built to a and woman's you don't really body. Need, yeah, you don't really need, like, a crazy-ass corset. I feel like oh, also we got kind of done dirty with Regency, um, like, period dramas because they're mm. never quite right. It yeah. always looks like they're cutting into their boobs, and mm-hmm. it's like if that were actually structured correctly, it wouldn't. It would lay just like on her chest. It wouldn't yeah. be like cutting into her 
boobs. Because that's what I that's what I always assume with those dresses is that they're like just right there with right, and that's just wrong. (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah, boobs. No, that's right. Listen, Mm. the Regency, like Victorian, they love their boobs. Well, early Victorian, not late Victorian. Once you, what am I even saying anymore? I think I mean Regency. The point is, it was tits out. I say as, like, Ooh. not a historian at all, but every time you look at, like, Regency fashion plates and stuff, like, tits out. They're like, nipples were out. Because that wasn't scandalous. The ankles? Those are scandalous. What? Oops. Nah. What? Who was the, um, the the ruler at that time? Like, well, it would have been George. Then tits out for King George the whatever. That's, like, tits <laughs> out for Harambe. <laughs> Oh, well, it would have been, I guess, tits out for the regent. <laughs> yeah. Tits out for the regent. <laughs> um. All right. And with that, this has been a roller coaster of an mm-hmm. intro. <laughs> mm-hmm. Merry friggin' romance or TBR a days. Yep, that worked out. Yeah, Mary. Yes. Yes. Um. Welcome to our Christmas episode. I read mm-hmm. a Grinch erotic romance and a Santa erotic romance. Wow. I did not. I did not. But I also <laughs> did not read many <laughs> um, of, like, the erotic ones yet. What What was I reading the other day? I don't know. But it was bad. So <laughs> there's that. I swear, I've I've read, like – so many christmas holiday because i've read some for hanukkah some for kwanzaa uh one for diwali and then um christmas and i just don't know what it is but christmas romances just never most of them just never work for me okay i'm saying never a lot of them just don't some of them do i have some favorites and some really good ones i read this year but like i read so many bad ones too i've had some luck with Mm -hmm. like a couple of novellas and some historical novella anthologies that weren't like amazing, but they were, yeah. you know, they were like fine. You know what yeah. I mean? Where I wasn't like, oh, like this is the bet, but I like, I had a good time. It was appropriately Christmassy. Mm-hmm. There See, was a tree I, or mistletoe. I didn't really have the time. I think that was my main issue. And so, like, <laughs> like there were just not enough audiobooks that I wanted. Um, mm. And the audiobooks that I did have, like half of them were just bad. And then, like, the other, like, let's say half of the other half were just bad narrators. And then I had the rest from, like, Kindle. And then I I also have, like, ten arcs from NetGalley that I just haven't read. And, like, that eats me alive a little bit. But, like, I've, if I'm not listening to an audiobook, I'm trying to, like, read on my Kindle um, because we've got a lot of those. And, like, the Duke in the Box anthology was 1,115 pages. (sighs) It took so long. Like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm like not even halfway. I don't it, think. I was like, I'm finishing this if it's the last thing I do, and it damn near was. Um, oh, I mean, I'll finish it. Yeah, but twelve it, novellas in one is. I mean, it's juicy. It's a it's a juicy anthology. Like, it's thick. They're just, and it was. I I thought it was very good. Um, I think like so there are twelve, and I had five five stars. And then one four something star, and then the rest were like in the three ish star range, um, or like three point seven five, three point five, stuff like that. But it was a good way to discover new authors, cause like I'd never read mm-hmm. Darcy Burke, I had never read um, was it Lily De Pasqua, and what was the other one that was another five star? Um, because I'm definitely gonna. Yeah, I think like- it's funny you liked the Darcy. I've only read up through the Lila De Pasqua, but uh. I think it's funny you liked the Darcy Burke so much because I was like, meh. All of these all so the, far have been meh to me. All the ones I liked are very soft, are very, um, like, most of them don't really have breakups. They're all pretty. Like, they, they fit the the type of what I like. Like, I definitely have a type. And it is You'll Be My Duke by Darcy Burke, The Frosty Duke by Lila DePasqua, or Lily. I don't, I can't remember what that is. Uh, the Duke Deal by Valerie Bowman, Undressing the Duke by Erica Ridley, and then Right Place, Wrong Duke by Elisa Braden. Um, like, what? I read another Elisa Braden. Um, was it good? Novella. Oh, it was so charming. It's not Christmas, but it's 
Winter in Scotland, and it's about like the Northern Lights, and it's got a bunch Is it the, of um, Scottish the pinkish cover, magenta. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like Once Upon a Midnight Kiss. Is that the one I'm thinking of? Yeah, Once Upon a Midnight Kiss. So adorable. Uh, it's not super steamy. It's only like one scene, but it's a. Uh, uh, I don't remember what I think he's titled, but he's like an academic, um, and she's his secretary. And they've worked together for many, many years. His bespectacled secretary. They've worked for Ugh. many years. And she takes time a couple of weeks to go to Scotland to get, like, collect this thing from her Scottish family that she has to get for one of her relatives. Um, and so it, the, book, the, the novella opens with their letters back and forth. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't know, like, two weeks is a long time. Like, he's kind of annoyed that she's gone. And she, meanwhile, is like, oh, I have to go get this thing. And it becomes clear that her, like, family – she asks for him to find her, like, family ring or something. Mm-hmm. And he finds out that her – like, the women will only give her the thing that she's there for to a married woman. Um... Like, that's part of the, the whole family thing. It has to be a married woman. And so she's like, I'm just going to marry, like, this guy. He's, like, her uncle's – assistant what he's like there with her and uh the employer writes this like frantic letter and is like no don't marry him and he shows up and like so the book opens with him grumpily marrying her in like an amazing you know like a scottish anvil ceremony and she's like what you don't have to do this like you don't and he's like shut up we're getting married (laughs) because he's so mad like he's so grumpy with her but also he's like in love with her and it's so cute. And then they just, like, go to this little cottage and the relatives are weird and have some magical powers. Oh. And they do academic things and look at the northern lights. And they're in love. Aww. And then they have sex and then they leave. And you're like, well, that's the cutest shit I've ever read. Um, the one in the anthology, uh, the Elisa Braden one, was um, she um, is in, like, a small town. Her cottage, like, her family cottage is on the ducal land. Um, and he's currently evict, like evicting her family. And then, um, so our hero is the brother, the half brother of this Earl. And he's also the half brother of another Duke who she thinks is the, like, who think she thinks she's going to kidnap to, um, get him to stop evicting her. And so it's, it took me so long, like (laughs) at the beginning to figure out how they were all related. Um, yeah. And so technically this guy has two half brothers and they're all noblemen. They all were able to keep their titles and stuff because they were all technically legitimate. I love this stupid <laughs> primogeniture rules where it's like, well, they <laughs> literally and they all everyone knows he's legitimate. Every everyone knows I'm... that the the Duke of Dingwall is the one that she's angry at. That's what a name. Uh, the land that her cottage is on. And then he's the Duke of something else. I don't fucking know. And then um so they look alike. So the Duke of Dingwall is a little bit older and a little bit uglier. Um, and then you've got our Duke, who's the hotter one. And she's only got this slip of paper that has his drawing, like his face on it. And so she goes to the the bar that he's supposed to be at. And she's like, there he is. The, the artist really made him look kind of ugly. That's kind of rude of the artist. And so she kidnaps him, tosses him in the carriage. And he's like, hey, ma'am, I don't. I don't think your gun's loaded, but she wouldn't, like, take the time to listen to him. And so he was like, you know, she's really hot, so I'm just going to go along and we'll see how this goes. Um, I know you've seen Ted Lasso, so there's the scene when Keely is talking to Rebecca and she's like, those uh, beautiful breasts of yours, Rebecca. This guy was a total boob guy. <laughs> All he kept saying was those those bountiful breasts <laughs> of yours. <laughs> and, like, that, like, he said it, like, so many times. And so he literally was just like, wow. She, like her, her her boobs look real good i'm gonna like let myself be kidnapped and then obviously they go to the the cottage and she again tries to just um threaten him with the gun and be like hey this and then he's like i'm sorry but that's not loaded i'm not even the right person you've kind of failed and then um he just he helps her and he gets the brother to obviously rescind everything and uh, my favorite part was that she was a widow and um, her husband was a bad person. And the hero was like, was his death painful? And she was like, oh, absolutely. Um, he was terrified of horses and he got trampled by a horse and it was slow and painful and long. And I was like, that is exactly what I need. He is dead. I don't have to deal with him, but it was painful. 
and then okay, and, <laughs> and then and then um at another scene because he like made her super insecure and everything and he's like so you you were like it was painful right like his dad and she's like oh yeah he's like i just wanted to make sure because he was a real asshole and it was really cute um and that was the last <laughs> one. Oh, yeah his death his death was really painful <laughs> it was cute that's it's it was perfect i was like that's the opposite end of that i also read a widow romance novella <laughs> uh which i feel like you probably shouldn't read Probably not. Probably not because her she was in love with her husband and it's been a couple of years since he died. And her whole thing is that she's ready to get married again, but she wants to find someone who, like, you know, she'll get along with. They have pleasant conversation. The physical aspect, like, there's – he can kiss. Mm-hmm. So she's checking. Uh, but she doesn't want any passion or anything that is going to make her forget the love that she uh... had for her first husband. Um, but of course, her first husband's best friend has been in love with her since before they were married. What is it? And um, it's called I feel Three like Kisses Till Christmas. I did not read that. It was sounding real familiar, but Three nope. Kisses Till Christmas by Charlie Lane. Um, <laughs> and she, I guess, like they, it's normally his mother that does it, but his mother passed away, and so since then, her mother has been hosting this thing in the town where, like, anybody who's lonely doesn't have somewhere to go during the holidays they host like they can come to the house and stay and party and all of that good stuff and she intentionally hangs up a little sprig of mistletoe because there are three men that have expressed interest in marrying her um that aren't that guy she Mm, won't even mm -hmm. think of him um and these three it's a, a curate a poet and a viscount who was like a friend of her father's or something like that um who are like suitable candidates and so she's invited one each night in the three like days leading up to christmas Mm -hmm. and intends to kiss them to test them see if that works um but they've all been warned away and are ignoring the warnings by prescott the marquis who was the best friend who Uh like watched her he like went to the wedding and watched Mm -hmm. them get married and was like well they're in love and i just i would do it again to see you happy like it's fine everything is fine anyway he just pined for many years and then he helped her through her grief and they started to fall in love and then all of a sudden it turns out his garbage brother is just leaving bastards in his wake across the land and he being the responsible brother has suddenly become responsible for a like young girl and two one-year-old twin boys Mm -hmm. um and so he has to leave to go take care of these children um and he didn't want to propose because then it would look like he was just trying to, like, get a, a mother or, like, a, gotcha, a permanent yeah. caretaker. And so he just left but warned all the other guys off of her because he was like, I'll, I, ju- I need a chance. Just, like, <laughs> everybody leave her alone. But then he left and she thought he'd, like, abandoned her for mm. a year. But now he's back and he's, like, here to woo her. And he tells her so and is like, you have your th- – I'm not going to kiss you yet. You kiss those other guys. Uh, he may be the next man you kiss, but I will be the last. And she's that like, was a good line. It was a good line. And she's like, whoa, what did he mean by that? And she's like watching him care for these small children throughout the book. And she's just like, wow, I'm obsessed with you and you care for small children. And I'm like, girl, <laughs> me too. It was it was very charming. But her whole thing was like, I can't be with him because he's like a complete like I feel like a different person when I'm with him. Mm. And it makes me like like passionate and forget what i had with my last husband and so she has to like talk to her mom and have all these things where her mom is like you're a different person now you can have a different Mm -hmm. kind of love etc that's how one of i don't remember which one it was but one of the novellas in duke in a box was kind of like that i think it maybe would have was one of the ones i gave five stars to maybe not um there were 12 i truly even the ones i loved i'm (laughs) like (laughs) like, what what did i read um there was one like that though where it ended with like her having like a different type of love for the hero than the love she had with the um last husband that she had loved um I do it's always love a, little, a widow romance yeah it's always a different experience when they actually do love and they are grieving uh what was that? i th- i just really should have studied this before we started this episode um not the first few all blended together the only one i really remember i mean i've only read four 
And I remember the last one that I read, which was the uh, Frosty Duke. I, she goes I, to him anonymously for sex less or seduction yes. lesson. I liked that. I loved that one. That was one of the five star ones. I, I did um, find it quite charming. I think because like it, like it's only uh, it's not super long. It's one of the no. I think one of the shorter ones. But it like it does within its scope what it needed to do. Like there wasn't a huge breakup or fight. It just, like, they were stuck together. She accosted him. He was like, damn, you are hot and crazy. But now it's mm-hmm. snowing, so I guess you can stay with me. They the writing, a lot the of writing was really good. Yeah. And they had sex quickly, and then they just kind of, like, yeah. fell in love. And then you were done, and you were like, that's, that was all that needed to happen. That's how I felt about the ones that I liked. You know, like, they all pretty much – it. It, it happened pretty quickly and there were there were um anal beads in that one if you were there were <laughs> yeah. to, there to let were. our listeners know um i i have like my notes that i took for each novella to help me remember um and my gift for that one because i do like a gift reaction was just a frosty um from wendy's and it's a french fry being duck dunked in a white frosty and i'm like well that was fun and suggestive of me um <laughs> yes that one <laughs> that one was very fun um and then um the one i erica ridley's was so fucking good it was a duke and his valet and um his he had been the valet for 20 years and um they both been just like absolutely pining for each other i mean the valet like bathes him naked and like the amount of pining and tension in that book was absurd and so it starts out with him basically telling the valet that he has to like like he's like laying him off because he's got to get married and it wouldn't be fair to a wife that he's just like absolutely hard all the time for his valet (laughs) and so he's like i'm so sorry but like i have to get married my mom is like hounding me like i don't want to but like i have to so you you just gotta go and he's like that day and i'm like dude that was a little bit harsh and the valet's like what i mean he's this like six five frenchman who's just like huge he's like a lot of the frenchman <laughs> the french are known for being huge apparently this one is and so he like he, so this guy is like super hurt about it and he's like very sad and then the duke's immediately like oh shit i i don't want to do this because like he's obviously been in love with him and um so then his brother is like, hey, we're going to go to this, like, uh, festival, like, Christmas festival, and you're going to hopefully meet your wife because that's where I met my my wife. And instead of laying off the uh, valet, he's like, hey, why don't you come um, and, like, help me through that? And then um, after those, like, two weeks or whatever, then that'll be your end of employment and stuff. Um, and like, they're, I mean, they're just like best friends. Like they play chess together. They play like card games. Like they're just like very close friends. And neither of them has acted on the attraction. One, the one who had to be bathed was always like trying to not get hard <laughs> the entire time. So he's just like sitting there and then for 20 years. And then the one bathing him had to like hide his erections <laughs> and like run out of the room for 20 years um so then obviously they go to this festival i'm gonna be real with you 20 years 20 years that's too long i it worked because the novella was short if it would have been a full-length book you would have it would have been a lot but like i guess that's fair but like yeah like it's just it was just because they were just friends so i think they were like okay with the friendship because they still had each other it just wasn't obviously sexual um but then they go to the uh festival and it's kind of like not like a fake engagement or anything but like he's pretending to be just like not a servant or like valet but just like a nobleman who's just along for the ride so then they have to like share a room because there's only one room left and one bed and and it did have one explicit scene and i was like go you erica you you go glen coco i said it right this time if anyone was curious um so that one was really good and then um I don't even know. The Kate Bateman one was good. Um, I think I just wanted like a full book of that one. And it was a lot of them just like being on the island trying to survive rather than like going at it. So that was – it was still like four-ish stars, like a little bit higher than four stars. Um, There was a a waterfall, which was nice. Um, And then what else? 
the the uh, the Darcy Burke one. Oh God, I do I remember it? No, did I love it? Yes. I didn't care for that one. I liked I the start. Sobbing. Um. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was like, girl. What? <laughs> I dude. I liked it at the start, and then by the end, I was like, eh. I okay. I remember it now. It all came back to me. Okay, we're here. I don't know what was okay. So I had seen on Twitter this like wife who had lost her husband. So I was like already sobbing before I read. Like I was like halfway through this book, and then I went on Twitter like one does and always makes mistakes. And I read her like terribly sad story about her her husband. I was like, oh my god, because I was like right at the sex scene. So I was like a little bit turned on, and then I went on Twitter, and then I was like so fucking sad. And then like I finished the story, and then just like mortality and like aging was like in my mind and then they for some reason the thought of them having like a, a, a supper 16 years later made me sob uncontrollably i don't know what i don't know because like the the premise of that story was just um they were stranded right and the- yeah they like hated each other because uh-huh. they he was like 23 and she was like 20 yeah, so their they parents were, like were trying to arrange a match between them. They had mm-hmm. met years earlier, and like he was trying to play a prank on someone that ended up getting played on her, and she yeah. retaliated, and they went back and forth, so they hate each other. And her plan, because everyone is trying to match make them, is to lead him into the woods, and mm-hmm. then and- <laughs> she would like drop beads, and then she could abandon him yeah. and find her way back and just leave him <laughs> in the woods. But then it starts snowing, so she can't find her way back and out. He's so, and he's so bad at directions. <laughs> Yeah, and he's directionally challenged. She probably like could have me. killed him. <laughs> like, sure, but she, did, I don't well, know, right? she didn't know he was that bad, so he could just like well, stuck in the snow. So I, I would have died. I she also have could have way. died, though. They were just That's out in true. the woods, yeah. so they found a cottage and they stayed there overnight. And they basically are like, "Well, I don't actually hate you, and also, basically, there's no way for us to get out of this without getting married because mm-hmm. we're we've been compromised. So we might as well like get to know each other and also have sex." And it was fine. I just, like, they apologized to each other so many times. They just kept coming back to apologizing (laughs) to each other. And I was like, bro, it was like one snake in a boat, one jam in the boot, and one lemonade over the head incident. (laughs) We needed, like, one apology from each of you. We didn't have to keep coming back to it. And also, there was something about the sex scene that irked me. I think it was one of those, like, she's a virgin. And she said something weird that I was like, girl... Oh, it's gonna bug me. I do you know when you read it. like it's it's some like virgin in a historical, and it's something like mm-hmm. you know, like when they're like, "Oh, I'm I'm growing wet." Is that supposed to happen, oh. or like things like that that you're like, "Shut up!" Like <laughs> I know I normally I don't probably, think I mind that. Oh, I do because I'm like, girl, come on now. <laughs> come I mean, some on. Some of them didn't know. <laughs> I I don't know whatever I don't know if it was that thing but whatever it was I, I, was I think like, it, I think it was Ugh. though because he was he I think he was only like twenty three but like um well but she just she made some of those comments that I'm always she did. like ew yeah. uh. oh see I don't mind that <laughs> rip well I really enjoyed that one um I thought it was cute all the ones I enjoyed were just super cute there was um one that was like a second chance what one was it that one was really well written okay. Uh, did I even write it? Okay, uh, The Duke Deal by Valerie Bowman. Um, it was, uh, marriage in trouble, like, they had been separated for, um, many years. I think it was, like, four years. She thought that he cheated on her, um, and he never told her what actually happened, um, because he was caught in a lie, um, he had gone to his mistress's apartment. So then she's like, were you just at your mistress's house? And he's like, no, I was out at the club. And she was like, yeah, you're lying to me. And then it was like all of her insecurities like come into play because his mother had also like said that he was going to cheat and to her. And then he was just pissed off because he's like, I can't believe you think I would do this, but I also lied. And so it was just all that. Um, in, in like a full length novel, the miscommunication would have like gotten to me. But in like the 90 pages that it was, um, it just really worked. Her grandfather wanted um, him to come because they ha- no one told uh, the grandfather that they were separated. And so they had to like pretend to be a happy couple. Uh, and he's like, okay, I'll do that if we can try for an heir because I want children. And she also had wanted children. So she was like, yeah, sure, that's fine. Um, 
And so then they had like two really hot sex scenes of them. I love. Um, Fine. Being, oh, we have to have sex. Yeah. So they were both angry about it, but they were they were also happy about it. And then um, I just I really liked the the um, tension in that one. I felt like that one was really well developed for the shortness of what it was. Um, and- There's a marriage in trouble that's not actually a marriage in trouble in uh it's another anthology that i read a yuletide kiss which Ooh. has stories from madeline hunter sabrina jeffries and mary joe putney and i don't know which one's which but they're all they all take place at this in like all the stories are happening mm. at the same time mm-hmm. um and the f- first one so it's it's like all of these people are traveling this inn is technically shut down for the holidays but there it gets really icy and all these travelers end up stuck there um and so a lot of the story and i i ended up giving it like three stars because admittedly a lot of the story is like these aristocrats like learning to hunt or not hunt they know how to hunt but like bake and decorate mm-hmm. and like they have to take care of themselves because there aren't any sir or there's like one servant and the woman who yeah. owns the inn like and like it was cute, it was fun. There are some funny scenes with, um, like the heroine from the first one is a what's it called, like a companion to an older woman, and mm-hmm. she like makes bread and pies and stuff, and they've never cooked anything, so it's, you know it's a good time. Anyway, but she's that one's a second chance. Um, I think it would make more sense if I had read the other books in whatever series that yeah. is, because he's essentially been like he's actually a poet but he's famous as a playwright but in reality it's his friend who is a duke who is writing the plays but the duke can't like say that he's writing them so he got this guy and while they were working that out and they were testing him to see if he could pass for a gentleman he had met her in like bath or somewhere and they fell in love and then he left um so they both end up at this inn and they have a story um and they find this guy passed out super sick in the middle of the cold um and they don't know who he is and the innkeeper woman is taking care of him um and they fall in love and he meanwhile is like a secret agent so that's fun and then but the third one is uh this i think she's a lady like a a titled you Mm, know mm -hmm. noble woman of some kind whatever um and i don't really understand this setup but they were in india and it was like her uncle or something listen i was i'm shaky on it it was something like her terrible uncle tried to auction her off in a bar uh, Ooh, yeah and a a drunk fellow englishman stood up and he like won her essentially yeah. but he was trying to just like save her from the situation mm-hmm. but the uncle insisted on seeing them get married because he didn't want to just like sell his yeah. niece off or what i again i it might not even be her uncle but somebody tried to sell her off and insisted they get married so they just kind of like found a priest and did it um and it's like seven years later and the two of them end up at this inn and he never thought the marriage was legitimate like he thought he just saved her and got mm. her out of that situation and he like pulled his life together after that uh and he like walks into this inn where she's sitting and she goes oh my god you're my husband because it turns out it it was a legitimate marriage uh and so she's been unable to get married or do anything for seven years uh, <laughs> because like and her family was trying to figure out like they don't know this guy or like where he is or who he is or whatever like they have to they were gonna try to get him um declared dead so that she could marry this other guy yeah. that was like enter- he was like friends of the family and he the guy that he, he shows up and he meets her and he's like oh dang I didn't think it was real <laughs> but he's like kind of into her so he's like hear me out before you marry this other guy what if we just like get to know each other while we're stuck at this inn and maybe we could just stay married as one does <laughs> and they do obviously that sounds fun it was dumb but I, <laughs> I had a good time oh relatable i Uh, love historicals they really will be like and they seven years went by (laughs) seven years i think think that's why i'm like in a little bit of just like i never want to read a christmas romance again is because i just haven't read enough historical ones because 
mm-hmm. most of them don't really have audiobooks. Um, but the only other one that I liked that I listened to an audiobook, actually, yeah, because I listened to a Valerie Bowman one, but I didn't like that one. Um, but Once Upon a Christmas Eve, uh, it's Maiden Lane. Um, mm-hmm. Elizabeth Hoyt, I didn't know it existed. Um, but that one was cute. I don't really remember much of it, but... <laughs> Um, oh yeah, uh, the one thing is that, uh, she kept tearing his wig off and I thought she was really real for that because (laughs) I too would just get that fucking wig off at any opportunity. Um, because I sure don't like wigs. Um, yuck. Yuck for me. Um, but it was good. It was a good audiobook. It was Ashford, Ashford McNabb who narrates the entire series. Um, I think it had come like after, I was trying to like remember, the books I had read for Maiden Lane and like where it all fit in, but I sure could not. I think it takes place after the Duke of Sin one, and I haven't read that one yet. Um, so at some point, I need to go back and reread all of those. Uh, but that was like the only other historical audiobook I had. And then um, there were just like a few. I read like another novella, which wasn't like my favorite. And that was like basically it for historical. So like Duke in a Box really carried me. Um, mm. And I have, like, some other ones, like, some anthologies and stuff, but I just didn't get to them before this. Um, but, yeah, that's what, that's what I had for historical. I don't know if you had any other ones. Um, uh, Kissing Under the Mistletoe was the other anthology I read. It was mm, mm-hmm. by – that one wasn't, like, it, it was just three different novellas. Um. It was fine. I honestly only really remember the third one is like a fake engagement. He catches her breaking into his apartment because she's trying to steal back a watch that he mm-hmm. swindled her father out of to try to give it back to him for Christmas. And he has this like vendetta against her father. Same. And so he won't give it back. And he's like, fine, you can have it. But only if you pretend to be my fiance, because I told my grandma that I might be getting married and now she's coming to visit Same. it's very um how to fall for your fiance uh then they fall in love and it was it was cute i liked that mm-hmm. one um i think that one the first one is probably the best and it also i think i would have appreciated it more if i had read the series that it was from but it's yeah it's fine like you'll get what's going on um but it's a scottish one and he so clearly the other people have all had their romances and they're yeah. like big Scottish brothers whose parents are separated and they all end up married to little English wives and it's cute. <laughs> um, and the heroine is kind of an older spinster. She's the companion to the estranged mother who's now back in the family. Um, because she like in another book helped out one of the other heroines mm. and lost employment because of it. So now she's, she's here um, and she's-, she's trying to figure out what to do with her life. Um and she meets, I think he's like a cousin of the various brothers. Uh, and he's an architect. He's designing the house for one of the brothers. He just walks around in a kilt. He's missing an eye and he's got like a scar on his face because he fell off a horse and onto a fence. And he's a widower. Oh. So, and he, he loved his wife, but it's been many years since her passing. But like, it's a small town. So nobody like... No women have been, like, hidden on him because they all knew his wife, you know? Yeah. Like, small town. But she is very into him, and they're both, like, very bookish and, like, mm. shy. They're both very, you know, soft. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I like you. But do that with a Scottish like accent. Okay, <laughs> okay. We don't want me to try. <laughs> no. Um, no, no. But it was it was cute. I liked that one. But those were the only... Yeah. I think those were the only... I started another one... But it's Avon. Yeah, I read I read one Avon anthology and it wasn't good. So <laughs> don't really recommend that one. We had read A Wallflower Christmas. So that's also one of our recommendations for a uh, Christmas one. My uh, Oh, I'm just fully <laughs> like, what book is that? <laughs> You're like, what? I like really could not remember <laughs> what book you were talking about. I was like, yes. <laughs> I was like, I think we did a whole episode on it. We did. We did. <laughs> I just you just pulled a hand. That's okay. Forgot. I have a big list of other things that I would like to read. The problem That's, is some of them are Avon. That's what I'm looking at. My historical TBR consists of uh, "Twas the Night After Christmas" by Sabrina Jeffries. Um, I had previously talked about uh, "The Duke for Diana," 
and the second book in that series by Sabrina Jeffries, and I really like her writing. She's very funny. Um, so I'm excited for that book. I only have it in a paperback, and they don't have an audiobook of it, so I have to read that sometime when I have the time. And then uh, The Duke's Christmas Miracle by Christina Britton. That's a novella. Um, I got that from my library, so I have to read that. And then um, Kate Bateman's Orchids and Mistletoe um, in one of her, I think, independently published series. She released a Christmas novella, so I have to read that. But, like, that's, like, it. And then I have, like, a bunch of just, like, other authors on, like, Kindle um, that I've, like, gotten free over, like, the past year and, like, some of them are Christmas, so I could go back and read those if I have time, but I probably will not. Um, There's at least one Erica Ridley that I have on there because I got it yes. for free at some point. And yes, I have also, one of those. Oh, I bought some stuff on Kobo, too. There's Sailor's Delight by Rose Lerner. I, it's not Christmas. I don't even know if it's Hanukkah. I don't know if it's holiday. I just remember somebody posting about it because mm-hmm. I know it's Jewish. And I know it's uh queer male male so i have no idea if it's a holiday but i put it on the list because all of the rest of them are christmas and i was like somebody give me something else um and then what am i i have a bunch of like different anthologies the christina Britton is in a forever anthology that came out i want to say like last year when scandalous season and i've had that downloaded for a long time oh who else um who else is in it I don't remember. Let me look and see. Because Forever has like Grace Burroughs. I think Elizabeth Grace Hoyt. Burroughs might be in there. Hold on. Jennifer, it's Jennifer Grace Burroughs, Ash. Elizabeth Hoyt, Jennifer Haymore, and Christina Britton. Look at that. Okay. I was going to say Jennifer Ashmore, but it's Haymore. <laughs> so um, close. I, it's so close. I have, a, I have on my Libby, actually. I was looking at the wrong thing. I have a few more on Libby. Um, Anna Harrington, How the Duke Saved Christmas. Um, yeah, that one on there too. Yep. And then that's an Avon one, so I can't talk about it. And then uh, there's a What Happens Under the Mistletoe, uh, Sabrina Jeffries, Karen Hawkins, Candace Camp, and Meredith Duran. I want to read that because, again, I like Sabrina Jeffries. Um, so I'll test that out. And then Jennifer Haymore has one, A Season of Seduction. Um, that I also have the ebook of, and it looks like that's like a full length book. I don't think it's a novella, um, but of course it's not loading. So who's to say? Oh, four hundred eighty nine pages. Yeah, she's not a novella. Um, so that's all the the historical content that I'll be finishing up the month with, and then, um, I've been reading I think more contemporary, which is also maybe why I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> Because I've read some regrettable things recently. Um, but we've got, I suppose we can just maybe like list off some of the ones we've been reading that we liked of just like the contemporary ones. Mm-hmm. Um, we both read Wrapped Up in You by Talia Hibbert. That was a really cute novella. I liked um, that one. It was really good. That was the, um, in our last episode, we were talking about um, uh, randomly ovulating. <laughs> There's like this scene in it. The um, line is so funny. <laughs> Hold on, because I posted it to my Instagram story, which means we have to revisit because And I was so proud she's of myself. So funny. <laughs> I was so proud of myself because you posted it and I was like, wait, I just read that and I recognized it and I remembered it. And that doesn't happen for me. <laughs> so I was like, hey. So he's talking about it's like it? a childhood friends to lovers. Mm-hmm. He's gone off to America to be, and become like a, a Marvel Hollywood star. star. Yeah. Yeah. Um and She's got all these emotional walls that she puts up. I think they're also – I don't know if both of them are, like, autistic or – there's something. Yeah. I don't think yeah. it's ever said, but they're definitely, like, neurodivergent. Mm-hmm. Or at least she is. I think he is, too. Yeah. Um, But they've been in love with each other since they were kids and just never talked about it, essentially. Um, And, and it's, like, like, him one... and her twin brother and her are all yeah. friends. Yeah, and they, like – Kissed, kissed once. once while she was still married, but now she's mm-hmm. divorced. Yep. So it's a whole – and, like, they're both really scared. And so to it's a lot of, like, kind of tiptoeing around each other, but yep. also, like, all these feelings. It's very cute, though. It's not, like, annoying how mm-hmm. they, like, prevaricate, yeah, it's, but it makes it's sense. It's Talia Hibbert. She's fucking hilarious. Like, it's adorable. Ugh. And so he has this whole plan where he's like, I'm going to spend the next year – 
getting her to fall in love with me. It's a solid foolproof plan. And he's telling her twin brother about it. And he's like, this is a terrible plan. Why don't you just tell her that you have feelings for her? And he's like, no. And he starts to go and he's like, so here is my actual plan. I'm going to move back home, start to see her more often. Not in a weird way. Just like, I'm here. She's here. Why don't we hang out? She sees how super mature I am. And maybe she comes to my house sometimes and is in awe of my organized spice rack. I show her my Deep Valley records and she starts ovulating. I might paint my living room black. She'd be way into that, right? Anyway, after that, and then he like cuts him off. because He's got like a full year plan. So it's like a full year plan. Like I'm so <laughs> sorry, but like... She sees how mature I am. Maybe she's in all of my organized spice racks. She sees my Deep Valley <laughs> records and starts ovulating. Took me out. Number one, because an organized good. spice rack would work on me. Mm-hmm. And two, because she sees it and starts ovulating. And the, the delivery in the audiobook was just so matter of fla- fact, like blasé. Like, she starts ovulating and it just keeps going. And I was like, what? <laughs> oh. It was a good the one. The rest of the book is charming, too. I love, um... Mm-hmm. A love confession in the middle of a blizzard while helping yeah. a cat give birth under a bush. That's just <laughs> That's how just do you my get typical there? Saturday, you know? I love that one. That was quite charming. It it really um, just felt it really just felt like unfairly uh, or highly suspicious and unfairly cute, but just like for adults. Cause like that exact style is how that book is. Um so that was really fun. That was that I started off holiday reading with that one. Um, so I started off high. So maybe that was also part of my issue. Because um, then I also read Just Like Magic by Sarah Hogel, which you – have you just officially, like, DNF'd it? Mm-hmm, I think so. Yeah. I don't know that I'm yeah. going to – Which is unfortunate because I bought it on Audible. E- e- ooh. That so is I might, unfortunate. I might have to go back and power through. But I really I mean, don't want to. Yeah, I so I liked it. I I will like it a lot better next year when I don't listen to the audiobook. And like you told me not to, I did. It's my fault. I just didn't have time to read. Like I wasn't going to read it if it wasn't going to be the audiobook. Um, and I so like I see what it was trying to do. Um, and like it it was still good. Like I thought it was funny, but it just wasn't um it it tried to kind of write like Talia Hibbert, I think. Like it really felt like uh Sarah Hogel was trying to get all those like pop culture and just like very like witty, snarky things. It was a truly absurd book. Yeah, I like a bonkers book, but I don't I don't think this is the bonkers book. For me. No, it like and like you said, like the narrator, it was just bad. Um, I think in a different narrator, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. I mean, I still gave it like, I think like 3.75 because, um, it was fun, but again, I'll enjoy it a lot more (laughs) when I just read it. Um, but I can also see why people would not want to read it. It's not my vibe. I powered through the audiobook of A Cat Cafe Christmas, which is Mm. a forever book. Standard disclaimer that I work for forever. I didn't love the audiobook. It did get better with time. I initially started the audiobook because I was reading it for my book club. And it's Boston. I figured it out very quickly because he's from Boston. Um, So he's from Boston and she's from the South. And so she has like a little bit of a Southern accent that she really leans into. And she goes hard on his Boston accent. Mm. And... I'm going to be so real. Boston accents, not sexy. Um, I really struggled initially, but the more I listened to it, the more I kind of just tuned yeah, it out. Because I happened. like did not – it was like the night before my book club, and I was like, I'm just going to put this on 2x whatever speed and listen to it because it's a long book. Mm-hmm. Um, And then I got over it, and it was fine. And the book was pretty cute. I actually – I didn't finish it in time for book club, but I finished it after. Um, And it was cute. I think it's good for like – it's – not quite closed door, but like very vague. Mm-hmm. The one scene that you get, you know, um, like I wouldn't feel weird about my parents reading it. Reading it, yeah. You know? Like they're just she's there. She, they're working together to save the cat cafe and get all the cats adopted by Christmas. And they're doing a like basically friends with benefits type thing where like they're into each other, but they don't think that they'll suit. And both of them have like mm-hmm. really dramatic relationship or, like, past relationship things yeah. going on. So they're, like, not in a place where they think they can date, but they're into each other. So they just kind of, like, 
get to know. They're essentially dating. They do that thing where I'm like, guys, you're basically dating. Like, if you just yeah, called that's, it that. That's where friends with benefits and stuff gets on my nerves. Um, yeah. Because I mean, they, they do like have – around it. Her thing is, like, her ex-fiancé was – a massive scammer who's just getting out of prison for the past two years because he she was like very high up in a nonprofit organization to like help mm-hmm. animals mm-hmm. and he charmed his way into like being with her and then got access to her laptop and stole millions of dollars uh and so it ruined her life because the trial yeah. and everything it came out that he had like stolen it from her computer um Uh-oh. media like came for her saying like was she involved? She ended does, up being cleared of charges. Does he but like have like a slow, painful horse death? I mean, he's getting out of prison. <laughs> so no. So no. And he's like Damn. trying to like call her and sue her and style all these oh. things. Anyway, so she's like not on social media. He like really ruined her life, basically. Um, and then the hero, his girlfriend left him for his brother and they're now married and having a baby but the problem it's not that he's mad that they're in love the problem was that they had known each other before she started dating him and they didn't say anything like when he introduced them oh they didn't say anything at all and That's then a whole separate romance book the brother had her tell ben the hero that like they were breaking up so that she could be with him and then they like moved in together two weeks later so he's got like family drama because he's mad at his brother so basically they've got all these issues and they don't think that they're compatible and they're like well let's just like spend time together and also save the cats and he's fostering a kitten that he found in his house that he's renovating but he doesn't like animals, but she needs, she doesn't have room, so he has to take care of the kitten, and obviously he falls in love with the kitten. Obviously. Have you seen obviously. The Nine Lives of Christmas, or, like, The Nine something? It's a no. Hallmark movie. It has um, uh, Brendan Ruth. He, he was an old Superman. Um, he's super hot. He's in that movie, and it's super cute. Um, she's, like, a vet, like, in, in vet school, and he's a firefighter. And then um, he finds a a cat named Ambrose. Well, he names it Ambrose. And then um, he has to, like, take it to the vet. And it's very cute. It's a very cute movie. I recommend it. Well, similar Um, vibes. mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just cats and Christmas. (laughs) Have you watched the movie Miracle? Because I feel like the Boston accents in that movie. No, I don't think so. It's the 1980 uh, U.S. Olympic hockey team. Oh. No. Oh god, it's such a good movie. Watch it. I recommend. Um, it's like players from Minnesota and Boston, basically. And so you've got the old, you know, Minnesotan accent. And then, <laughs> like, oh yeah, we got a throwaway game up in Rochester. And then <laughs> and then there's like the Boston. Um the Gotham like, College Boston hockey. Rough. Yeah, it's it's a whole thing. Um, but the accents are heavy in that movie and the the thighs are thick, so I do recommend because they got real hockey players to turn into actors. And I sure do love it. (laughs) I'm a slut for that movie. It's so good. (laughs) Uh, And there is a Christmas scene in it. So technically, then we've got like the crisis of uh, confidence, like speech going in the background. It's very dramatic. Very good. Um, Yeah. And then (laughs) on a book note, I read uh, Holly Jolly Diwali. Um, and that one was really good. It doesn't have the best ratings, but man, did I relate <laughs> to the main uh, heroine. I mean, she really was going to move to London for this guy after a week. And I was like, honestly, yeah, yeah, I, I've been there. Not maybe moving to London, but I feel like I related to that. Um, people just didn't like her, but I thought she was very likable and oh i remember that one being i read it last year and i Mm -hmm. thought it was like fine i think it there was something about it that it wasn't her though i thought she was fine but there was something about it that just like didn't quite work for me Mm -hmm. i don't know it's been too long since i've read it yeah it worked actually a lot better than i thought it was gonna be it's more just like general fiction it's not really like I wouldn't say it's a. I think that might be what it was. Yeah, where it's I was not. Like, it wasn't really more romance. Like fiction than romance. Because um, she goes on this like blind date with the doctor, and then I thought he was going to be the one because she gets laid off, and then she has this like good date with him, and then um, he's like, 
telling her to just kind of like live her life. And she had turned down going to her friend's wedding in India because she had this job and she had like no vacation days, but then she got laid off. And so when she was drunk at this bar with him, she called a friend and was like, hey, I can come to this wedding. So then she goes to the wedding in India and then she's still kind of like texting the doctor and then um, she meets the like bass guitarist of the wedding band um, and then his, I think, aunt, uh, she like befriends and then she like befriends him and then um, she kind of just like goes around um, India like with him and um, it's like very insta love. Um, I didn't mind it because again, like I didn't really, I wasn't really there for the romance. I was just there for like the plot of it, I guess. And so like it worked in that sense for me. I think I would have liked more romance if it would have been more developed, but I was intrigued as to how they were going to play the doctor. Cause I did think he was going to be the hero, but then he obviously turned out to be a dick, um, which I liked better than him being likable and just not getting the girl. Um, and then there was a scene where she, they were like, she was just like, Oh yeah, I'll just, I don't have a job. I'll just move to London for your band. And he's like, mm, no. <laughs> and then she got all offended and then she went home and, it was a dramatic, like, dramatic, like, makeup. But, um, yeah, I liked just um, – I liked her. So I was just there for her story. Um, and the author has written a lot of other ones, so I would definitely check more of hers out. Hmm. Um, well, so I read another Forever One with Season of Love. I read that a couple months yes. ago, I think. Um, which is not Christmas, but it's like winter. It it covers from I think like Halloween through New Year's because mm-hmm. it's um, is there is it's, Hanukkah. There it? is a Hanukkah, but it, it yeah yeah. So There's, it's just like all the holidays. One of the heroines is Jewish, mm-hmm. so they do have Hanukkah. But um, this one's heavier. I really I think I ended up giving it five stars. Mm-hmm. Um, I really liked it. It was just a slow read for me, particularly the yeah. first half. It was just, like, really slow because it was pretty heavy. Um, I mean, it starts with her great aunt dying, who she hasn't Mm. seen in many years because she left to get away from her abusive family and, like, restart her life, essentially. And so she's coming back after her great aunt that she loved very much passed away for the funeral and is reconnecting with, like, her cousin who she used to be really close to. The other guy that made up the little three of them is gone apparently they had dated and broken up it was a whole thing um and she gets off on the wrong foot with the christmas tree farm the her jewish grandmother runs a christmas tree farm the manager of the christmas tree farm is not jewish but she is a Mm -hmm. hot fat butch lesbian as miriam tells us hell yeah regularly she's like she's really hot wow (laughs) um and they do not get along because Noelle loved the great aunt and mm-hmm. thought that Miriam was just the worst for leaving. Also, Miriam has an, a fiancé back in wherever she's from. Um, but they, like, are not in love. They're basically – it's, like, a political alliance between the two of them. Oh. Or, like, her girlfriend, like, really – she comes from a political family and just, like, needs a good – like, they're friends. Gotcha. But they're engaged. Whatever. Anyway, she's an artist. She, like, upcycles things. She's planning on just coming back for this funeral and then leaving. But then it turns out the great aunt left the Christmas tree farm to her, her cousin, the manager, Noel, and the fourth one who is the the guy who used to be in their group of friends and who nobody sees for the entire book. He gets the next book. Um, and so she decides to stay and help save the Christmas tree farm, which is... Um, struggling financially and it is quite lovely very good like found family which is true of most queer romances i've read i'm pretty sure and Mm. then another christmas tree farm sapphic romance i am smack dab in the middle of the the third act conflict right now i had to pause the audiobook to record this episode and i've got like well i've got it on like 2.5 x speed but 30 minutes left um which one is that is in the event of love by courtney k that that's on my tbr is it good? It was one of the the holidays. I think so. I'm not like over the moon about it, but I thought mm-hmm. I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's another like they're nice. putting on an event to save a Christmas tree farm, and they were close friends growing up, and then haven't spoken in years. And now Naturally. she's back, and they're still super in love with each other. Mm. Um, I, I mean, I think it's good. I we'll see about this like third yeah. act because you you've yeah. seen the conflict coming, and so now it's here, and you're like, ah, here we go. <laughs> So we'll see how it gets resolved. But, I mean, I thought it was – I find it quite charming. I nice. like the Christmas tree farm vibes. 
Nice I'd like to read the other two. No, there's technically three other. You know the Holligays? That's what they're called. It's like five. I, it's it's Helen Greer, Allison Cochran, because I want to read Kisser once for me. I'm, a, I'm talking about that one next. Courtney Kay, In the Event of Love. Timothy Janowski, You're a Mean One. Matthew, Matthew Prince, Prince, which is another one that I have a copy of and I want to read. And then Jake Ma- Arlo, something like that, who wrote – it's a, like, Jewish YA winter romance, but it's not holiday, mm. um, called uh, Excavate. Oh, the, yeah, that's How a Robert Collins a heart. one. Yeah, I have the audiobook oh, on Libby. Oh, yes. Um, so I'm going to read it. I'm not really into YA, so I wasn't planning on it. but And also HarperCollins. Um, someone – in HarperCollins, renamed the title of that book yeah, I saw um, that. to How to Excavate a Heart, parentheses, a holiday Hanukkah Christmas novel. And it's- Yeah, and the author was like, that's not what it is. My copy in my library just says, still just says How to Excavate a Heart. But like, I think if you Google it, like it says Christmas and it's definitely not. So very a weird, a little bit of weird ass shit going on oh harper collins i know and if you've noticed we haven't been talking about harper collins ones because the strike is still going you listen to this and it'll be day 27 i think because today is day 25 um and if it's still ongoing by the time this goes live which it doesn't seem like yeah stopping yeah yeah simon says yes um (laughs) so that's a thing that's still occurring um but the one that I'm going to talk about is Kisser Once for Me. The It's basically mm-hmm. like if you took Last Christmas by Wham and then also made While You Were Sleeping sapphic, like that's the whole vibe of it. Um, so like last Christmas, uh, she met like our heroine or one of them um, met uh, a random stranger in a bookstore and they had like a one night stand. They didn't think it was going to be a one night stand. Shit happened. Um, then they left each other the the next day and, um, the very next day they gave it away. Um, just saying. And, um, so it's been a year. It doesn't surprise me. Um, and they're still both kind of like upset about it. Um, and so you have, uh, what's her name? Ellie, Ellie. Um, you have her, have this like shitty job and um she's got this like kind of crush on um the he's kind of like the is like one of his investment properties um so he's like the owner technically of it but then there's like the manager and her manager is shitty and all that and the guy comes in often and then it works out to where he needs to get married um to be able to get his inheritance um because his grandfather had just died and he was a giant dick um, and wrote it so that this guy can't get the money until he gets married. And this guy, he's like, yeah. And he's like, I'm not, I don't really want to get married. You need money. Um, so why don't we get married for a year? I'll give you 10% of this, like two, like million, million, I think it is. Um, and then we'll get divorced after a year and it'll be golden. And she's like, honestly, yes, I need the money. She made the right decision. <laughs> I would have been like, yeah, sure. Um, and so she agrees to get married. They're technically engaged. Um, they have to like go to the courthouse to get the papers, but for all intents and purposes, they're engaged. And then he takes her home for Christmas. And what do you know? His sister is the woman that she met and slept with the year before and that she still hung up on. She had like wrote this entire, like, um, like, uh, serialized story about it online and, um, She's just still very much into her. So then she gets there and then um, it's just all like the drama of, um, you know, them not telling anyone that they know each other. Um, And then the sister also has a friend and then the brother has a history with the friend. And so then um, the friend doesn't like uh, Ellie because they're like, you don't love him. How how are you guys getting married? Like he didn't want commitment. Like it was a whole thing. And so then um, you've got two relationships um, on the mend in the book. And it was just very cute. Um, very funny. I love both Last Christmas and While You Were Sleeping. 
Um, and while there's no like coma, um, it sure did work. And then there was like a snowed in bit. They got snowed in at this um, cabin and skiing. Oh, it was it was really good. And like I listened to last Christmas. I was like dancing hardcore for a long time because I was just like into it. And then I watched the music video for the first time. And then it was just it's a whole thing. Um, but very good. Definitely recommend. The audiobook was really very good. It was Natalie Nottis who narrated it. Um, and she did a fantastic job. I heard nothing but good things about that book. I've literally never seen anybody read it yeah. and not at least enjoy it, if yeah. not like love it. Because it was like it was just really funny. And there were there was like at least one or two like explicit scenes, which I didn't know. I hadn't read Alison Conkrin's like first one, so I didn't know. Um, it was one open door scene that spanned two chapters. Um, and it was, like I said, in a cabin and they were snowed in. Um, and the drama was perfect. Like you knew what was going to happen. Um, I really loved it. Oh my God. But, um, there's a dog in it named Paul Hollywood, but it wasn't P-A-W-L. It was just Paul. But if you're a dog and you have a paw, you could be called Paul Hollywood. And no one would know, but it would be lovely. And then someone on Goodreads was like, but how about Paul Howlywood? And, like, I do have to say Alison Conkren missed the mark on the dog Paul Hollywood puns. But that's the only miss in that book because <laughs> it was very good. Yeah. I don't it think that even would have occurred well, to me. Well, because I, I, like, li was listening to the audiobook, so I didn't, like, I wasn't reading along. And so I was, like, someone telling me this is, like, Paul Hollywood, like, P-A-W-L. I was, like, that's amazing. And then someone commented on my status, and they were, like, no. <laughs> it's just Paul. <laughs> I was, like, come on, Paul. I was very sad. So there's that. Well. Um, did you have any other ones? I have two more. Uh, if uh, I just have my unhinged novellas to wrap up oh yeah yeah you've got got the crazy i've one. got two okay so you go well, oh and i one. also wanted to briefly mention um it wasn't like a favorite but it was a good like quick steamy one was uh mangoes and mistletoe mm -hmm. by adriana herrera uh I, it's a baking competition like tv competition i don't like competitive settings um, yeah, and I've had this in the past. Like, Love and Other Disasters was another, which is a forever book. Um, by Anita Kelly was another like uh, cooking whatever mm -hmm. TV competition, and that one actually worked for me. I ended up giving that like five stars because I just thought it was so wonderful and emotional and excellent. Um, but the the competition aspect always stresses me out. This one wasn't as bad because it's a novella, mm -hmm. and they're like partnered together. Like, they're working as a team for this book rather than competing against each other. So That's that worked, nice. too. Um, it was fine. It wasn't, like, the best thing I read. But, like like I said, it was quick. It was steamy. It, mm -hmm. I mean, it's Adriana Herrera. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's sapphic. They're both Dominican, I believe. They're in Scotland. Nice. They're, they're baking. God, I want to be in that, Scotland that's... baking. That's it. Uh, we we've been watching the uh, brunch show with Dan Levy. He's the host. Um, is it HBO Max or something? It's like the cooking competition, but it's all brunch stuff. It's a very good show, but it's very stressful. My my mom and I are like, oh my god, we don't want anyone to lose. Um, I have two more from Adrian Herrera that I want to read: The Toy King and then um, Her Night with Santa. Um, both oh, yeah, of those were. Right. I read The Toy King. Was it good? Uh it was like very sexy. I don't really cool. remember. It was uh, it, well. It's also the second one, so I feel like maybe the world building happens in the. Yeah, gotcha. so one. I should read. Okay, so I should read. Normal. I don't know. I haven't read that one. I yeah. just remember I'll... being like, "What is this world?" Mm -hmm. Um, it's like some odd paranormal things where he's like going to get her. I think to like bring her to his bro, like to somebody else that she's supposed to be marrying. Mm. Uh, she's really into like she makes sex toys or like designs them. And wants to do that yes. on her own, which is a very, like, Adriana Herrera mm -hmm. thing. And then he's got, like, a chest of toys. Oh, and and it's, like, they're faded mates. But I, I think they're, like, different species. So oh. for her, 
if she rejects him, like, she doesn't plan on being with anybody, I want to say. Or, like, at least not with him. So if she rejects him now that they've, like, mated, Mm -hmm. like, she would always kind of feel, like, you know, like a phantom limb type sensation oh, like it would gotcha, be clear okay. that she'd lost something but it wouldn't like derail her life yeah but for his species it would be like i think physical pain like it would be really bad for him to not gotcha. be with his mate but he's like willing to not yeah be with her because she doesn't walk well, whatever yeah it was morals after dark shit. like that's happened a lot in that series yeah well yeah. i mean it was really it was he had a lot of sex toys I do like that. That's There's what another, I remember from that. I think Esther, um, Esther Reads, if you're unfamiliar, I'll link her profile in the comments. Um, she's been reading holiday novellas like uh, Nobody's Business this entire month. Um, and I believe Toasty Inside um, by Zoe Mona um, is another sex toy one. Um He's like a lumberjack and he designs her favorite sex toys. And then she like it's, – it's like snowed in I think and then – she finds out that he designs her favorite sex toys. Um, good cover. Looks good. So I'm going to read that one. Um, my – another oh, one that I – other one is good? What? The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Lee. That's on my TBR. I don't know how to say her name. I read yeah, it last Chloe year. Lees, I think. It's not super sp- – I mean, there's a good sex scene at mm-hmm. the end. Um, but it's very – I mean, it's You've Got Mail. And yeah. he's diabetic, I want to say. And she's – something she's some kind of like neurodivergent i can't remember what her thing is um she's i th- i think like a, a, either autistic or like some kind of neurodivergent um and it's it's you've got mail in a bookshop they're co-managing the bookshop through the holidays and she loves christmas and they're i aming, but they don't know that they're i aming. and he's a hockey player i do like that that's that's a little bit hot. Those hot hockey asses like like uh just, what what you call it like uh you, do, you know when you do it like for fun but not like as a professional yeah like a rec league or something yeah um it was quite good I I liked the sex scene a lot and it was very adorable nice I have to that's on my TBR um hopefully it's on uh, it'll be on Kindle if I don't already have it I don't quite know what I'll have um I, I read original. Ooh, okay. I have a Kobo gift card, so the fates have aligned for me here. Um, then I read uh, Let Your Hearts Be Light by Faye Quinn. It's the um, most adorable cover ever. Um, one hero is bisexual and the other one is gay. And um, it's grumpy sunshine to the extreme. Um, I mean, truly, the grumpy one just hates the, the other one because he's sunshine. <laughs> He's literally like he like he's so happy. I hate him um, for like fifteen percent of the book. And then they had they're both single dads. And then um, their kids. There's like this program at school where you can like have buddies for the holidays. So you like somehow it was never actually told how it worked, but um, the son of the grumpy one rigged it because he had a crush on the sunshine one's daughter. So he like rigged it um so that he w- they would end up being paired so then basically the two parents had to then like tag along with the two kids and like organize events there was like a ski trip um there was like baking because the sunshine one's a baker other one's a carpenter or like a handyman um there was like a movie and stuff and so it was like forced proximity of the kids like kind of like having crushes and then the two dads and it was just so freaking cute um it eventually worked out to where the kids were like they're like they felt like siblings. <laughs> the crush did not last, um, so no weird step sibling things happened. Um, but it like the cover's adorable. The book was adorable. It was super fucking hot. Like good sweet Jesus. Um, <laughs> it was very very good. Um, there were like some quirks in the writing that weren't necessarily my favorite. And I think if I would have had the audiobook, I wouldn't have noticed them. Um, but other than that, I really recommend it. Um, oh, yeah, that was a good one. On to Sexy Grinch. <laughs> Actually, we'll leave that one. <laughs> I'll God. start with Santa. Santa Claus is going to town on me. Tits out for Santa. I, listen, I – was it good? Not really. <laughs> Did I read it? Yes. It is literally Santa. It's not even like a mall Santa or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's straight up Santa. 
she, our heroine was never visited by Santa on Christmas. Doesn't believe in him. Um, she never got toys and stuff. And also has basically spent her life blaming herself for her father's death. You That's know, when you're a healthy. child and you cause yeah. the death of your parent and then you're convinced that everyone blames you for it, including yourself. Yeah. And therefore, she doesn't deserve for Santa to visit her. Anyway, now she's like in her 30s and she hears an intruder in the house. So she pulls up with a sword and it's Santa. And turns out Santa went to the wrong house. He's delivering a child's presents to her. But they are instantly really into each other. She's like, wow, this giant white bearded man in a red suit really doing it for me and the thing about santa is that he's number one not human he's magical he can change sizes and stuff uh he can make anything appear disappear whatever uh and also one of his special powers is that he can read or like he hears all of your wishes (sighs) so she's like i want you to rail me like i this man is so hot he's like i would like to rail you also but alas I've eaten millions of cookies and drank millions of glasses of milk, and I have to get home. To, like, I have to finish this up. I'm behind schedule. But I'll be back tomorrow if you want. And she's like, bet. So Santa comes back the next day. They have a lot of sex. He changes sizes while inside her. Like, he grows. Like, his whole body grows. I think his cum tastes like peppermint. I'm pretty sure that was a it, – it, it might be the Grinch one that that's the case, though. Actually, it might be both of them. It's probably it's, both. He's just straight up Santa. He also – he lives on another planet because he couldn't mm. live at the North Pole. Someone would find him. So he just lives alone on another planet, and he travels through, like, pocket dimensions with his reindeer. There's no elves. He makes all the toys himself. Um, but time passes differently on his planet. So you can spend a long time on his planet and then be back on Earth in the blink of an eye. It's like a Narnia situation, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. Also, there was a Mrs. Claus, but she died a long time ago. He's like thousands of years old. So they have a lot of sex. There's a lot, and I mean a lot, of uh, like Santa and Christmas related puns and wordplay and things. So, for example, actually, let me just open up my highlights for you, Um, because I only highlighted the really, really good ones, and there were uh, just too many to count. They were constant. Um, This one says something about, hmm, wondering if I have enough time to shower before he jingles me all the way. He, of course, has a massive sack. Mm. Sure, of course he does. Um, at one point she goes down on him and when he comes, he says, oh, oh, oh. Holy night? No, just <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Fuck. It's magic, you know. What? Uh, my last one is just, mm, yes, he gives me the Kringle tingles. Ah! Like I've never felt before. It's like, oh, it's a lot I of think, like that. I think this would damage my psyche permanently. It, I don't think oh, I'd, it definitely I don't, caused psychic damage. Like, I don't, th- I don't I, think I'd make it out of this one. Um, but it's like really funny. I just don't think like I mean he Santa. makes her a magical toy that just like magically suctions to her clit and feels like his tongue and looks like a candy cane. I don't really understand how it works, but she can't get it off. Like she puts it on and gets it going, and it's and then he walks in and she's just like getting herself off, but she can't get the toy off because it's magical. No, no nothing gets me going like candy cane clit sucker designed by santa claus my other highlight is part of me is relieved i don't have to navigate a life in which i'm getting down and dirty with a beloved cryptid what so they end up falling in love as you do uh it wasn't it wasn't great but it was santa it was Santa. the one that was good and it kind of pissed me off was grinch and guile this is a paranormal romance. It's set in, like, there are other books written in this universe, but it's some kind of, like, alternative dimension type. Th- they're in, like, a city. Her friend is, like, married to a d- werewolf or something like that. There are, like, orcs and fairies and all these creatures, mm-hmm. right? But she's human. And she's a journalist. And she there's this... 
there's this mob, like, organized crime syndicate, and it's run by the boss, G.R. Inch. Uh, Okay. No one's ever seen him. So no one knows what he looks like, but he is terrifying. And he just, shortly before Christmas, also, our heroine is an orphan. And she loves Christmas, and her whole hobby is making candy. She makes a lot of candy throughout this book, okay? Um, Oh, this one is also second person present. You did As in, you do this, and then you are doing this when he calls you. Like, which I normally would hate, but for some reason Uh worked. I don't know. Um, Anyway, she writes a piece on the fact that G.R. Inch just blew up a toy factory. Shortly before Christmas, and she's pissed about it. And she gets a call from an unknown number. And he's like, how dare you write this article? I allegedly, whatever. He's, like, mad that she didn't write the article well enough. (laughs) Basically. And she's like, oh, my God, are you G.R. Inch? Like, no, that name. (laughs) Well, it's, you don't know his first two initial, Mr. Inch. So she's like, oh, my God, are you Mr. Inch? And he's like, yes. So he keeps calling her because he's like, you need to rewrite this article. Uh, And her boss is really into it because she's like, oh, my God, you're going to get, like, an exclusive with this guy that no one's ever talked to. Um, And so he keeps calling her and she keeps putting off writing it. But she's very, very attracted to his voice. Like, she's super into it. And so she, like, fantasizes. She doesn't know what he looks like, but she fantasizes about him every time he's on the phone with her. And so he calls her, like, once a day. They do a little, like, 12 Days of Christmas-style countdown with each chapter. Um, At one point, he, like, talks her through phone sex. They've never met, but he just is like, all right, sweetheart. He's got some kind of accent. I don't know what it is. But he talks her through an orgasm. And then he eventually, she has to come see him. And it turns out he is green. He has pointy ears. He's, He's furry, furry from the chest down. He has claws, which I was stressed about because she kept talking about wanting his fingers in her. And I was like, he has. And, and not only does he have claws, he uses those claws to like shred her body. She's like yeah. covered in bloody claw marks by the yeah. end of this hookup. Um, yeah. But don't worry, guys. Does he, does he like bite off his claws? They do that in um, no in after dark. They like because he says I don't want to deal with biting them off. So instead, he just puts on really, really dark, almost black, dark green leather gloves. Oh, okay. And then fingers her. And also, I'm pretty sure his cum also tastes like peppermint or something like that. It tastes Christmassy, and she thinks it's funny because he hates Christmas. And obviously, it's revealed that he's not as bad of a guy as you think he is but he is still a mob boss and he does still his entire office everything is green and he wears all green and he has red eyes and pointy teeth well i'm thoroughly alarmed he does get that off really well by that description she's Uh, really into him though go good for her there's someone for everyone and i don't think he's that someone for me but i'm happy for no Probably not. Probably not. Um, Yeah, yeah, it was a lot. It was kind of good, and I was a little bit mad about it, mainly because she was fucking the Grinch. (sighs) That shouldn't be good. And yet it was. That, wow. I completely forgot about the crazy ones. I just didn't even... That's okay. That was on my radar. Yeah, I think I'm I also, for I it. do need to read Plowed, which is the sequel to Santa I Claus. I do want to read that one. And then there's like Santa Baby by Eliza McLean. But yeah, the Plowed, was the Plowed one the one who wrote um, the Jack book, did you say? Or what was it a sequel to? It's there's it's a sequel to Santa Claus is going to town on me. I oh, gotcha. There was I don't know a thing. There was a Thanksgiving one stuffed that was the same author of the Jack. Ah one we read <laughs> um damn. oh i wanted to see if i had highlighted anything from the grinch one i have one highlight Uh-oh. it's when she starts like fantasizing about what would have like she you think that he's mad at you whatever the point is that the highlight is oh he had been speaking you'd been too caught up in the perverse fantasy of him using your skull as a gelatin mold to hear his words what 
What? It wasn't like really a fantasy. She was but just thinking Jell-O like mold? Yeah. She was like, I yeah. wonder what he would do. Like he's probably gonna kill me. And then yeah, this is gonna happen. Jell-O. And he would probably do this. Uh, and then you eventually get to the point where you're thinking about your skull as a gelatin mold. And I was like, hmm. I feel like there are a lot of holes in the skeleton mm. to where the jello would seep out. Mm. Look huh. up. Um, I'm probably good. <laughs> That's an alarming thought to have about well, your lover. They're not your lovers grinchy, yet. Your Grinchy Your Grinchy lover. Your Grinchy lover, soon to be Grinchy lover. God, he also has a three-headed dog named Max. Well, he's got to have a dog named Max. Yeah. And if it's not a Cerberus reference, what are they doing? You know, true. All these guys have three-headed dogs, and we love it. This was a very long episode. This was, and I still have one more. <laughs> oh my! God. But it'll be really, it'll be very quick. Um, so. Today, um, in a haze, I read five Kwanzaa books. Um, there's a series. Wow. It's yeah. There's uh, on Kindle Limited. It's Kwanzaa Kisses, and so I had like downloaded one, and I didn't realize it was like a full series. Um, so I read five of them. I think there are like nine in the entire series. One I know isn't on Kindle Unlimited, um, but all of them um, take place around Kwanzaa. Some of them have some Christmas in it too. Um, my two favorite, um, so they're all different authors. So it's like, um, you know, like a series, like a connected, not really connected series. Maybe it is. I don't, I think some of them were connected. Some of them, I didn't really find the connection. Um, but my two favorite, um, were yours until midnight for the spice. That was my favorite in that sense. Um, it was like a Cinderella, um, plot very quick. Um, basically she gets, um, like wristbands to this like fifty thousand dollar a plate like uh, donation dinner, um, and he's a basketball star I think, um, and it it was like his mom I think had put on like the foundation that's putting this on, and then she died and he's sad, and then um, she wanted to be a princess for a night, and then it's insta love. Most of them, I think all of them are basically pretty insta love. Um, one was like a um, brother's best friend. Um, so that one is my favorite in terms of spice. And then my favorite in terms of plot and writing was Candlelight Promise, um, by Leah Violet. Um, that one was just super cute. He was the mayor in just a small town and she was watching her nephews. Um, and then she would take them to the Kwanzaa festival every night. And the mayor was obviously like helping run it. And then she ended up, um, getting a job in the town and it was just very cute. It was the least steamy of the bunch that I had read. Um, but he was just a very adorable mayor. It was a good series. Um, again, like I said, like they all had different writers. So I had some writers that I wasn't a huge fan of and then some that I was. And um, So yeah, I <laughs> read five of those today. Um, and then that is I have a – no, it's not officially anything. It's I have a follow-up. It's not one that I have read. <laughs> It is one that that reminded me of, though, which is on my list to read, mm. and I thought I should shout out because it's a similar. Well, it's called "I'm More Actually," and it's mm. a similar like it's a, mm-hmm. it's, it's a novella like collection written yeah. by seven different authors, yes. but like they're interconnected. Mm-hmm. That's on my like, TBR the, too. The characters are um, so it's Zoe Castile, Alexis Daria, Adriana Herrera, Diana Munoz Stewart, Priscilla Oliveras, Sabrina Sol, and Mia Sosa, um, which I have from my library and i am excited to read oh i should check i should check my library and i also lied i also listened to the audible original let it snow uh, by michelle stimson and that was also very good um the voice actors did a phenomenal job and they're basically snowed in at the airport if you've seen unaccompanied minors it was like that um but just two unaccompanied adults who then accompany each other <laughs> Um, but there was no spice in that. It was just a cute, um, you know, holiday relationship. Um, but yeah, that was <laughs> truly <laughs> my last one. Um, yes. So, and the, the episode's long because we were going to do a TBR Tuesday of holiday episodes and then we were like, we should just do a full episode. So technically this is like TBR Tuesday and a full episode together because we didn't release a TBR That's Tuesday. That's how we're week, justifying so. it. Yeah. Two for yep. one. Two for, for one. We love a sale. Long. I'm impressed if you have. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, well, I'm going to see if I can still make it to Target <laughs> in 20 oh minutes. God. I have to go to Target again. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how okay. that Okay, I believe in you. Thank you. Um, well, happy holidays. Um, yes. Unclear if we will have another episode before. Yeah. I don't think before Christmas. I don't think so. I think we're going to take, we take a break. I think we're going to take a break. I think we're going to take a break next week. I think that was maybe the plan. I I think so. I, well, we had originally we had these plans for like roundups of like best yeah. of type things, but with the Harper Collins strike and so many of our favorite books coming mm-hmm. from like Avon especially, we didn't yeah. really want to promote those while the strike and is it ongoing. Just, yeah, and the ex- just knowing how many of because I mean I, we're historical romance readers. Avon is the the final boss, are. so um, there's not much we can do. So we're just gonna wait, and whenever the strike ends, we'll just wrap up our 2022 sometime in 2023. Yes. Um, so I guess like watch the socials. We'll, we'll yes update and, there. But um, sign the open letter. Um, yes. It'll be linked in the show notes. Um, there are already over 10,000 signatures. Um, you can also donate, um, just share word about it, because um, a lot of people just don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, Which and like notes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you want to hear those episodes, support the union and the strikers and help them get a fair contract. Um, tis the season for fair pay. Tis um, the season. Yeah. So... If you don't hear from us, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy, happy holidays. Ho- holidays. Um, happy New Year. I happy New Year. Merry New Year. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy your winter break. Yes. Enjoy it. I cannot wait to not have work. Oh, and yeah. it's going to be great. Um, ho, ho, ho. Tits out for Santa. Um, Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. <laughs>